All right, so uh, this is my first kind of tutorial, and uh, it's pretty new to me, so uh, bear with me. Um, I've been posting like a little experiments, um, live coding stuff in Super Collider, and this is the kind of walkthrough of uh, of the, of this process, it's somewhat simplified. And before we start, we uh, we will have to install a few things. And it's it can be done within Super Collider, so using a Quarks install. So I'm going to evaluate this. It's already installed. Yeah, and the next one. And you will have to recompile the class so that what you install takes effect. Then yeah, we are good to go. So essentially, we installed uh, uh, the first of the first one is uh, is a cell automata class which I made which implements elementary cellular automaton. Actually, there's two of, the, of these. And uh, yeah, it's a kind of state machines, uh, which has rules and uh, behaves in certain ways according to this, the rule. And the first one is called PCA1, which we can actually plot and then you get these kind of images. And we see here we are initializing the cell states with either 0 or 1 and times 512 so that's the size of the array we get so if you evaluate this alone oh sorry uh, if you do this yeah you get to uh, 512 um, um, number of bits basically and then this is the rule so in this case rule 110 is like this and if you change it to rule 50 let's say you get a very different pattern so basically lots of zeros and ones and uh, if we make a stream out of it maybe uh, with a smaller uh, array so we can see it more easily so just nine values we make it a stream and by calling next we can indefinitely get values but in this case it's just zero let's say the rule 110 you see the pattern of bits changes it keeps evolving according to the specified rule. That's one thing. And then the other thing that we installed is the sample library I made. It's just with a few instruments and to have some acoustic kind of sound. And what it does essentially is uh, it creates a map of uh, MIDI notes as, uh, associated with uh, the sample. So we boot the server, evaluate, and then you get a map of all the MIDI numbers mapped to a certain sound file. 
and by uh, accessing it, the, the array. So in this case, it's a MIDI node number 60. If we evaluate, you get a specific sound file and an, a necessary transposition because it's not the samples don't cover the full MIDI note numbers. It's much smaller in size, so you will have to s transpose certain samples to fit into that specific MIDI note frequency. And we can just quickly hear this. I made a little scenes, which has basically the play buffer and the samples are all monorail, so we need a pan in. It takes the buffer number and the rate of playback and it will release automatically after playing the entire sound. So that's this and then I have a variable map and we assign the specific mapping and use the first element of the map which is uh, buffer and the second element of the map which is a uh, scaling transposition and we make a random panning between minus uh, 0.5 and plus 0.5 if you evaluate this alone, yeah, you get random. Uh, so if we evaluate this, we hear, yeah, uh, the same note with slightly different panning. Uh, and if we change the note value, yeah, we get the lower note. And uh, here's my little uh, function which takes a degree and the scale as an input and gives you back the MIDI note number because it, MIDI note numbers are essentially chromatic scale and usually you you want specific keys or uh, scale you want to stay within a key and then it just does that evaluate and to use it we create a mode in this case it's a lithium mode and we give the mode and uh, degree of the mode so the, the, the zero degree would be the first element the second uh, the second degree is the second element the third, a third degree is the third element which is four and actually you can do minus degree too. It, it maps to at the appropriate uh, MIDI note number. And if you remember we made a stream of Serial Automata, Automaton, which just indefinitely evolves. And we want to, because it's a zero and one state, binary state, we want to use it as a gate to trigger sound. So we assign stream next to gates and we do gates do. So we iterate over the array. In this case, it's nine elements, so maximum you will get nine uh, gates on or off. And then if the gate is on, 
uh, we create a map we use the d2k function to get a specific midi node number within the Lydian scale and we transpose it by 60 so we start from midi node number 60 and that map of sound file and scaling we can use it to play our sound so let's try to evaluate this so you see we get three note chord we get also five note chord sometimes it's more or less so this is the first degree probably no not really um actually yeah yeah so this is if this is on that plays uh, first degree of the Lydian scale if this is on that plays the second degree of the Lydian scale so you get some kind of sometimes it's a it's a chord and sometimes it's more like uh, clusters but I like clusters and yeah we can have some reverb so it sounds a little bit nicer um, yeah this is my reverb it's simple all pass network evaluate and then we first add the synth, the reverb to the tail of the process so that everything before it gets reverberated and the sound function has to be this because we will want not only to send the dry signal to the output but also send it to our reverb it's a little bit atten attenuated and then I use routine to loop over the over this process so each time it advances the stream so you get new uh, array of <coughs> zeros and ones which we use it as a gate and if the gate is open we will play the sound and the note is uh, falls always within the scale because that's what the D2K does and then wait for some time and go back to the beginning of the loop again so if we evaluate this yeah, that's what we get and of course we can make this faster have some kind of uh, random choice or some other logic of waiting and we can actually while the stream is running because we can it's simply calling stream next we can override the stream here let's say now it's running rule 110 if we run other rules you get different sound or And we can do also rule 90. So there are uh, 256 rules in total. And 
we can have fewer elements so that you get only three notes maximum. stopped but actually the loop, loop is running I think so we can say we can increase the size of the array so you get more higher notes too and so on so that's more or less how I do things on, on the videos I've, I've been posted. I use sometimes different kind of systems. But essentially you have these kind of sound functions and the loop is pretty similar. You keep the loop running while you can still rewrite the stream on the fly. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this walkthrough. Yeah, if you have comments or if you want to know more about each of these parts of the process, like the sample libraries, I can make another video sometime. <laughs>